Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to Cap Chat Live. My name is Josh Tyler, joined by the man in blue, Tyler Tomlinson. Tyler, oh, that's an old shirt. That's an old Culver shirt, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like love, uh, that's like three, four years old, right? I love wearing bankrupt apparel. <laughs> 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 Hey, yeah. good, good shirts though, you know, good shirts. Hey, can't complain. Yeah, on the, in the you still got the field out of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this company, are we allowed to? Can we say what happened, or does it? Is it? <laughs> well, do we just should we move on? We should move on. <laughs> okay. You're listening to Cap Chat, the number one soccer recruitment podcast in the United States. This is Cap Chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're moving on. Oh, I just got a buzz. Oh, there we go. Um, we're move, moving on. So Tyler Thomas, the head women's soccer coach at Culver Stockton College and our fabulous West Region Cap Director. Um, so, yeah, I so saw you guys had some games. You guys, uh, how's your spring season going? Did? Going? I think you have one uh, more left. Good. Good. Um Let's see. Results wise, no one cares about that, but we have a, a win, a tie, and a loss. So you got to nice. get a little bit of everything, sprinkled everything in there. Yeah. What? How do you? How do you use your spring season? Um, I experiment. I experiment. Um, you know, last year we tried some different formations just to see what it would look like in an actual game setting that we were trying to figure out. It actually helped us quite a bit for our fall preparation. And so this year, I would say we're focused a lot more on um, maybe some some different looks on building out and and where we can go and, and different ways to set that up to to you know be tough for defenses. Um, and then lastly, you know, it's a developmental time for people to maybe play a position they haven't played before, uh, give them a look uh, to where they wouldn't get that normal look in a in a fall season, and then obviously reserves. Um, are going to have a little bit more opportunity to to showcase what they can do against you know some better level teams. Nice, nice. And then, what's your spring season get like uh, practice schedule? What's that look like for you guys? Yeah, so we're about five days a week, but we do it probably differently than some other teams. Um, so we're only training you know three days a week typically, um, and then strength and conditioning's two days with the strength and conditioning coach and then one day kind of like on your own. Okay. And so, you know, that's still, there's still responsibility to the sport, but, you know, I think for us at our level, um, having that life school soccer balance in the spring is a real positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well cool. Well, good spring season. They're getting, and now you said you're done. We have, we do have one done. more day. One more. Uh, that okay. we're playing. Yep. So and that'll you, be and, the end of April. And you guys, what's your what's your time restriction date rules? You, you have so many. We weeks. have three. Yeah, we have three dates that we so, can use. Okay, meaning so in that play, date you could play two games in a day. Okay, yeah. so three dates that you guys get to play. Okay, and you can train. Your is there a certain time you can train four days a week? Or? We get twenty four weeks in the calendar year at NAIA, so you use about thirteen to fourteen of those in the in the fall. Okay. Um, so yeah. So typically, you're going to have about eleven, ten to eleven weeks uh, in the spring to train. So that that's a lot. That yeah. a lot compared. That's somewhere that that's a kind of a thing where the NAI kind of bumps up a little bit. Um, that they get more opportunities to be on the pitch. Nice, nice. It's always in Blaine, Minnesota, at the uh, National Sports Center showcase. So that was that with was the, fun. with the regional showcase team. With the regional showcase team, good good people, good kids. NSC is no good, um, so they are getting a stern email written written from me. Um, <laughs> oh, great! Yeah, no, just the just the whole thing. We had k- kids get hurt, trainers weren't around. It just mm. it, it, little things, li- little things in, in that for you know, I don't mind saying it on air. So it's um. Yeah, I wish it, I wish it could be better, but showcases are tough, you know, with with um, with travel. So, um, mm-hmm. and, and you know, and speaking of, of travel, Tyler, I I don't know if you've seen this clip. This is some a couple people have sent this to me. Oh, here we go. 
travel sports, sports are destroying, destroying American, American families. Family. Period. 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 Okay. Period. Period. And you, you as a, a, a well-tuned well in mom, mom, are feeling are the feeling pressure. The pressure. If you don't do this do from this, these from external these coaches, external if you don't do this, and your kid's not going to make this team, and if they don't make this team, there's no way they're going to get on this. And if they're not on this team, then how are they going to, right? You feel that. And right. it makes sense. And you have a 10 year old telling you, I love this. I love it. I love it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. And then you got that feeling in your mom gut that, like, something's off. Travel sports are destroying American families. What do you think? Travel sports. And we'll focus on soccer. So this is our this is our response in our travel. It's travel soccer, ruining American families. <laughs> Tyler, you want first crack at this one? Well, I I think it's interesting. Um, and I I wouldn't I would say in a lot of situations I don't fit the mold of what we're talking about, right? Um. I do as in the sense of like, I'm a college coach, so I can talk about the recruitment process, but yeah. I don't, I don't always get to put my parent hat on, um, in, in college advisory program chat live, uh, podcast episodes, but I happen to have, uh, about a 10 year old daughter, uh, that plays a travel sport, uh, it being soccer. That's um, why your family's ruined. Family is ruined, you know. <laughs> it's get this ring. <laughs> <laughs> you had to resort to a hairless cat. No, sorry. <laughs> to, to save the family. <laughs> um, yeah. What? So I, I actually get to wear my parent hat for this, Josh. So this is very rare. I would honestly, like, from my personal experience, and I do have some. He, I think he has some points. Okay, but I will say to, to the to the ultimate overlying comment that he made. I feel like the travel sport has actually made my family closer. Yeah. The time that we spend together, whether it's in a car, um, in a restaurant, in a hotel, um, giving us maybe a different common thread, you know, outside of family and church or some, you know, something social um, to add to our family dynamic. I would say that it's done the opposite for, for my family. Uh, Now I don't have five kids all playing different sports, that could be a challenge. Um, but I don't think that's what the point was of, of the rant. Um, so, yeah, I think for me personally, it has done the opposite on the overarching theme. Now, we could get into the, to the other themes, but I'll, I'll let you give your perspective on the overarching theme. Yeah, I, I mean, I do agree. And I think we're going to, I think your, your mind's going to, where my mind's going to do it go is, is that, I mean, Especially soccer, we can touch on soccer is a travel business, and we we know that they get kickbacks from hotels and things like that. But um, I'm with you. By no means is 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 it running. Uh, I can put on you know as as a select coach as you know just this past weekend I said I went to um, uh, you know Blaine Minnesota. My oldest, he doesn't play, but Jack, he's 12. He comes with me. We have an absolute blast. Um, I see the weekends that these guys have, and I do believe there is financial strain. I mean, there is. It's 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 expensive, you know. Um, we had families from Canada that that drive in, and you know, they talk about the little things like the exchange rate and things like that. But the amount of fun they had, we went to a Minnesota United game. All the, the girls went to the, to the Mall of America. They hung out together. I have never had a negative comment on on a weekend like when we travel. Now, they do say this gets expensive, but I think they know what they're go- going into. Like, it's ruining, if it's ruining your family, don't play, right? I like, if if by, by signing up for youth sports, it ruins your family, then maybe you shouldn't play youth sports. There's probably some other issue cracking in your family, right? And, and that's, I don't know. Well, <clears throat> so a, a couple of the things that were said that I'd like to touch on. Um, one of them being that the pressure that the parents feel or this mom in this particular scenario is coming from the coaches. Yeah. Right. Um, and I can see in some situations that, that that's where the pressure comes from. Probably not a lot at the U 10 level, um, but maybe. Uh, so here's where the problem is. The problem is the pressure from peer parents. Mm. Okay. And the problem is the concern to 
have a status uh, and the concern to live up to uh, the neighbors, live up to the Joneses, live up to the people that are around you. And so the real pressure I feel in travel sports in America is not from the coaches typically or the clubs. It's from their peers. If mom's friend Jenny is putting her kids in all of these travel sports and taking pictures every weekend and putting it in Facebook, well, shouldn't we be trying to do what they're doing? Yeah. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. So don't, and, and you know what? There are a lot of different clubs. There are a lot of different organizations, your local YMCA, your local Croc mm -hmm. Center, your local park district that have leagues that you can get the same experience, not the same experience, you can get an experience socially for your kids yes. without spending a ton of money. And you can take those pictures too. And you can put them on Instagram too uh, at the local park or at the local yep. YMCA in the basketball gym or the volleyball gym or whatever sport it might be. There's the pressure. I don't think it's saying like, oh, hey. And, and I know it does happen. Like well, if your kid wants to play varsity, uh, you know, they're going to have to come through this. Or if they want to get a college scholarship, they're going to have to come through us. Does it help? Yeah. Are there kids out there that get scholarships uh, for college that don't go through the top club systems? Yep. Yep. So don't, I think the, that where the pressure's coming from, this guy has it all wrong. I think it's social media. I think it's friends. I think it's peers. I know. I like that. I do. And, and I think, and, and maybe, and maybe shame on some clubs. Cause I don't know. Like I look at my, you know, the local club, um, and it, you know, we clearly talk about what the travel expectations are, right? It, it's laid out there. Everyone knows we're, we're going to go one travel in the spring, one travel in the fall, and two local tournaments. Like it's laid out there, and so the parents get a look and go, okay, on top of our club fee, which is, and I know club soccer is expensive. So on top of that club fee, here's what the travel is, and if that's too expensive, they may have to, like you said, they may have to make a different choice, and I totally understand that now maybe there's some clubs and shame on them that are sneaking in trips but as a parent you should ask that right like i get the, i'm getting that question now because we're coming to id sessions and, and tryouts and i'm sure you're getting the same thing what's the schedule look like are we traveling or are we not and that comes into the financial decision of are we going now yeah. if a coach says oh by the way this weekend we're traveling to florida okay yeah that sucks because no one knew but I can't imagine that's happening. And if it is, shame on the coach and shame on the parent for not asking the right questions. Yeah. And, and, and I, I know the financial side of things is, is a true thing, but it's the same thing. You know, you have to be realistic about what your family can afford. And if it's something that's, or maybe you're close. And then, you know, my perspective is if it's the right club, maybe they'll help you. Yeah. Maybe they'll give you a break. They want kids to participate. Um, but don't think that there aren't other opportunities for um, growth, advancement, learning uh, that a kid can't get outside of the club world if they if they really wanted to. Correct. Right. It's not the only pathway, but it is a very positive, I think, social pathway. I think it's a positive family pathway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so in, in being around, you know, a lot of different families from all over the country and the world from Rush. Right. It's typically bringing them together. They're close. They know their kids really well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't say that for people that aren't spending that time with their kids that may be just stuck in their room on their iPad versus, you know, the kids that are, are going out to these places and spending extra time with their families. I, I just think that the family dynamic side of it is a big help, not a hurt. I agree. Yeah. And we went, you know, my youngest is in club volleyball and we down, went down to Springfield, Missouri. And we made a we made an event out of it. You know, we ordered, you know, we ordered food in the hotel. So the parents, the parents hung out. Like, it was fun for us. My wife and I. I mean, it was. We had a blast, and so did the kids. And I bet you look back. I mean, if I ask, if I ask Harrison, did we win or no? He doesn't remember. He remember the the. the <laughs> do you remember the pool experience? Remember that? You know, Jackson just told me when we went to. He remembers when we went on a trip to um, Knoxville, Tennessee. He went with me again, and he, he raves about the hotel pool because it had like a big two level slide. Like that's what these kids remember. Like that's, and and I know some people get creative because these are your vacations, 
and you can make a fun vacation of it. You know, we have Rush Fest for a week coming up in July for you know for Rush Soccer, but it, my whole family's going. Like that's mm-hmm. we plan that our vacation, and there's probably worse vacations than Colorado. I mean, that's a good fun vacation that some people never get vacations. Yep, I tell you, you know, and I think the parents need to be careful about adding the extra pressure. Yeah, right. You control the narrative in your household, right? And so if you if you are telling your kid you have to play on this on team X and you have to do your best at that tryout, if we don't make that, then you know you're not going to be able to do this or that. Yeah, you can't if you're if if the coaches are saying that, you know, like you said earlier, shame on the coaches, right? But you don't have to then the coach isn't saying that to the nine year old, right? So they're saying that to the parent. Well, then the parent, if they relay that to the nine-year-old, then you've let the, the, that negative coach in that situation mm-hmm. control the narrative in your household. You don't have to do that. Right. right. You control the narrative. You tell them to just go have fun and whatever happens, happens. And we can go find something different or a different club or a different sport or a different thing that's an activity that you can do that you like and enjoy. And I don't see the bad thing about a kid saying being nine or 10 years old and saying, I really love the sport. I really want to do it. Then there's plenty of ways for you to make that happen. Yes. Yes. Right, that's not a bad thing. Not that it was portrayed that way, but kind of I felt that way a little bit. I did too. That the yeah. parent can feel the pressure because the kid enjoys something. Like, pour into that. Yeah. Let the kid enjoy it. Right. Because you know what? I don't know if this guy's ever had a kid, but they might not enjoy it next year. Right. You know, right. it's over. So they'll be on to something different. And then you should, as a parent, support that new thing. Maybe they want to play the drums. God. God forbid, not in this house. But, <laughs> you know, like that, it's it's over quickly, Josh. You know how it is. Kids are into the next thing. So, like, yeah. if your kid loves something for us for that, now you don't have to push them. Well, you said you loved it last year, so you have to love it the rest of your life. Don't be an idiot, right? Kids change their minds. So, you know, as long as they're enjoying it, I say keep doing it. Yes. Yeah. I. You know. I. Yes. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. And I think, you know, I think a few final that we could talk about this for for a while, but. Um, totally lost my train of thought though. So I'm not sure where I was going with that. Um, but let me ask you this. When, when did, when did Desi start traveling? What age? Eight. Eight. Okay. Okay. Um, and I don't think it's a huge financial strain. You guys, what do you do? One, one travel tournament? Two tournaments in the fall. Um, and then she did two tournaments in the spring for eight years old. Yeah. Now, nine years old is a little different. They're, we're playing in the St. Louis Youth Soccer Association Public League. Oh, okay. Play so, Slicer. Um, there is travel components there. Um, you're talking about like an hour and a half, maybe two hours sometimes. Yeah. I'm gonna I, make... I don't think that's an abnormal age to start anymore, no. 8, 9, 10. It's no. pretty normal. No. And in every all kid... sports. And, yeah. Yeah. And every kid I see, they, 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 love, they love it. They love the travel. People get to go. Um, so, well, there's a, there's a rant on, on that. I, I do want to say, so I want to move on real fast and, um, I just want to make my, my prediction cause we're talking about travel. Um, I, I think this is my prediction is that corporations are going to start taking over corporations are going to start taking over, uh, tournaments and the travel business. Hmm. So what's happening is, and I know people don't understand this. If 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 ABC ABC is uh, FC is is hosting a tournament, they're going to go to a travel company. The travel company, which makes life easier, travel company now coordinates with all the hotels. Um, and it's no secret that the the ABC uh, club gets kickbacks, and then the 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 travel company will make money. They're incredibly nice to work with. They make they make everyone's life much easier. It's already happened in, 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 you know, say Kansas City here, but corporations now will become the travel agency, and the travel agency are the ones that are going to put on the tournaments. Um, in Kansas City, it's GSI. They are a travel company, and they put their own tournaments on. So there's no middleman. So now instead of dispersing another $20 a night in hotels, when you got hotel nights, that's an extra ten fifteen grand that, that, that corporation is making. Um, I think that's the direction that, because there is a lot of money in travel. We know that. There's a lot of money for a city of, of, of money coming in. That's why mm-hmm. cities are building turf complexes. Yeah. And there's hotels night. Hotels bring in revenue. So there's yeah. a lot of money involved in, in new sports. So yeah. that's I that's my prediction next couple of years. That Well, that, the term stay and play has already been 
it's out there. It's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, now you're, when you as a club are setting up tournaments for your teams, you are asking if it's a stay and play where if mm-hmm. it's a stay and play, you got to You have to stay at these several hotels. Correct. And that's it. If you're going to play in our tournament. Yeah. So it's, yeah I, you're right. Which I don't mind, but I, I, there's a middleman involved there and they do a good job and I, and, but I think they're going to start getting cut out. And I think people, I think clubs, the club run tournaments, because right now club runs a term. I think those are going to start going away and bigger companies, investment companies are going to come in and see, which is unfortunate because clubs use these as fun. Like that's how yeah. they get some of their money yeah. to keep their club dues low. I think that's going to be a major shift happening. Um, you, I'm, I'm going to save this and replay it in a couple of years. But... <laughs> when, it's, when, when the future is here, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, but I think that's what I think that's what's happening. You, you see it with. No, I, uh, I like. I think that's a yeah. a pretty logical prediction. So I, I'll probably have to support you on this one. Yeah. So, well, that's all we got. Uh, we. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So talk about responding. First time responding to a fan request. It was my wife, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> we responded. <laughs> we mean all all goodwill to to the person who posted that. Um, it was a good response to the topic. Tyler on on a beautiful morning. Thanks for hanging out.